Hello and welcome to Factorio 1.0. I'm Exterminator and thank you for joining me. And as you can see here, we have a new entry. Uh, I will be starting this new series that will be focused on uh, teaching new players and even intermediate players alike how to uh, play the game and progress and uh, learn all the little tips and tricks and strategies uh, to succeed uh, while at the game. Now, a lot of you who have watched a lot of my content and obviously have played a lot are going to find this, you know, maybe a bit too slow paced, uh, maybe not, there's definitely still things you can learn, uh, but since 1.0 has come out, we have likely a lot of new players uh, joining the community, and I hope some of you have found your way here if you're new to the game. Uh, welcome, and I hope you're going to have as great a time as I have and many others have. And, uh, you know, the game can be daunting, and if you feel like you're getting stuck or you just want, uh, you know, just a little intro into how to get some stuff done in the game, then hopefully this series can help you. I will be going, like I said, slower than normal and going over almost every single detail I can think of to just try and touch on all the little uh, tricks and concepts I've learned through the years of playing and the general strategies I can try to pass on to you guys. Uh, now, if you are looking for kind of a more advanced playthrough, I do those type of things on my stream over on Twitch a lot, which is linked in the descriptions of my videos, where I, uh, I don't focus as much on instructional stuff and focus more on, uh, you know, just just playing and, and, and building and, um, you know, just progressing at, you know, a faster pace, a, a, you know, a pace that I'm, you know, more accustomed to at this point. Uh, but I am going to uh, likely do another YouTube only playthrough like that as well. But we're going to start with one that is uh, very much meant for new players here. So as you can see, we've landed in 1.0. We have our little introduction here. Our spaceship has crashed. Uh, some remnants here that are not looking too good. Uh, we have our little introduction here. Your task is to launch a rocket into space. You will need to research advanced technologies in order to unlock the rocket silo. Start small, work your way up with automation, and don't forget to protect yourself from the natives. All right. Oh dear. Okay, so uh, this thing is a little bit unstable at the moment. Uh, if you see we mouse over it, it has this hitbox, which means it's something that can be uh, you know, mined or gathered. Uh, and you can see over there on the right, over there on the right, uh, under spaceship, we have uh, a little symbol and there's eight. That is ammunition. Uh, so this means we can actually harvest this for some ammunition. I think perhaps I want to wait until it stops burning. Uh, but this is what our map looks like. So you can open the map by hitting M. Uh, all these hotkeys I'm going to go over are pretty much completely customizable and configurable uh, in your settings here. Uh, under controls, you can customize pretty much everything. There's a massive amount of customizability, uh, which can get overwhelming. So I would suggest maybe, unless you have some special setup or uh, you know, needs in terms of like your mouse or, or what you're able to do, um, I would recommend leaving things default for a while until you can kind of just get used to the game in general and like what options you even have uh, before going and messing with those because it can be quite daunting. It's even daunting to me still. So we have a map here and we see several different colors uh, aligned throughout here. So we have this kind of tannish, which blends in quite a bit with this particular background uh, stone and you can mouse over it and this tells you how much there is, 259,000. We have copper, a little over half a million here. We have iron, uh, almost 700,000 and we have coal, uh, nearly half a million. We also have a little pink dot here, which is some oil. Uh, one oil well is not very much. We're going to pretty quickly going to have to go seek out some more. So that is going to be uh, one of our goals uh, once we, it, like pretty much as soon as we get to oil. We have some more iron over here. This one is actually very, very uh, rich, meaning you know, it has a lot in it, 2.8 million. And then we have a red guy here, and this is actually an enemy. This is, uh, this is the natives, the biters, uh, they're called. Uh, they're like bugs, and this is actually really quite close to me. So we're going to have to go take care of that, uh, exterminate them, if you will, uh, pretty quickly. Okay, so we can actually harvest a lot of this for materials. We do start off with a drill, a furnace, and one wood. Uh, however, if you mouse over all this, it will tell you what you get. Uh, you can see we're mining it here. We're getting some iron plate for this, which is going to be 
uh, pretty much a staple throughout the entire game as something you're going to need. I'm not necessarily going to harvest every single one of these right this moment. That one actually doesn't give me anything. Um, but let's pick these up. Anything that may give me uh, material. Doesn't look like any of that does. And let's go ahead and harvest this guy. I hate to get rid of it because it's very cool looking. Uh, but we do need that ammunition. And I will need to clear these actually to build. Uh, but... We can go ahead and get started. So what I like to do typically is start my mining on iron. And I do this again because it is early game, uh, a very important resource, more so than any other resource early on. Uh, as the game progresses, you kind of you know transition a little bit into what resources are required more, but iron is extremely important early on. So I'm gonna go on my inventory and pick this up with left click. You can also, we have this hotbar here, um, we can also just place this here and it basically creates a link between our hotbar in the inventory The item is not actually physically in this hotbar. It's just like a shortcut if you will to it uh, In the furnace and we access this just with our number keys 1 through 10 as you can see I'm hitting 1 2 if there was anything in 3 4 etc uh, And then the bottom row you can switch by hitting X So you can have an entirely different setup here and switch them with X by default and uh, if you click one of these, you can set up multiple different prefigs here, up to 10, uh, and then switch between them, which is really nice. So uh, you can shift between those by hitting sh uh, shift, the actual shift key and the number. So I did shift two to go to our second setup, shift three, we go to three, shift one goes back, etc. So I'm gonna place this down here and I'm going to place the furnace directly in front of it. You'll see we have this little output spout here uh, this little yellow arrow indicates which direction is going to spit the materials out. And these uh, symbols, of course, mean it needs some fuel. So we luckily have coal very close by. I'm going to come over here and just mine this. Uh, we do have a little wood, uh, but coal is quite a lot better than wood. It, it lasts longer, as you might imagine. And we're going to pick this up. And I'm going to exit my inventory. So, well, one thing you can do is you can... Go into here and it will open your inventory and the inventory of the item. You can just left click on it and then you can left click and left click drop to put something in there, right? Uh, as you go through the game, this will become quite tedious. So you will want to be using shortcuts if at all possible. So what I was going to do is I can take this out of my inventory or if I had it on my hotbar, uh, I can take this out and if I control right click, it will put half of what I'm holding into the machine. Now I had three, so obviously it cannot put one and a half, so it just put one. If I had held four, uh, it would put two. Uh, so we can do that. Shift right click does that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put another one in here and another one in there. And that will be very useful once you really kind of just, you know, put that to your muscle memory and continue playing with that. It'll make playing much easier, much faster, and uh, just much smoother in general. Now control left click uh, puts all of it, so it just put the entire amount I was holding into here, which there may be instances where you wanna do that. Uh, shift left click does nothing, shift right click does nothing uh, when you have something in your hand. However, if you just mouse over this without anything in your hand and you control left click, it will take everything out of the output slot right here uh, and then give it to you. Uh, same with this, of course, this takes it out of the fuel slot, which is something we do not want. Uh, and then shift left click does nothing, shift right click does nothing, and control right click uh, takes half out. So that's another option if you wanna do that. Uh, so a lot of it's going to be based on your control key. So this is working, we now have some iron plate. Uh, well, we can't really do anything with iron plate alone at this stage, so we're going to need some stone. Uh, I mean, of course, we can make some transport belts and burner inserts, which we will be using uh, the belts in mass here uh, fairly soon, but not quite yet. Uh, we do need some stone to create more of what we started which, with, with, which was the furnaces and the burner drills. Okay, so we're just going to mine. I'm just holding down right click here. Mine the stone. Get this guy going, let's start with 10. So if we go into our uh, hit E to open inventory, that's pretty intuitive to other games. Uh, go into this production tab here, we have stone furnace and burner miners. 
burn a mining drill. So I'm going to make um, two of these and one of these. And I made two because this actually requires a stone furnace. When you mouse over a material or a, well, a material or an item, it will tell you what it takes. You can see their ingredients, three iron, three iron gear wheels, a stone furnace, and it takes two seconds. You can see their craft time. Uh, this total raw, what this means is how much materials it takes in its entirety, including all of the intermediate. So the five stone is what it takes to make the stone furnace, which you then use to make the drill. The nine iron is the three iron plate plus six iron for the iron gear wheels. Uh, and then the total raw is how much time it takes for all of that, uh, meaning that this takes two, uh, half a second to craft, uh, this takes two seconds to craft, and then the cumulative craft time of all the gears. Okay, so that's how that works. Uh, some of this, like the, you know, the ingredients and craft time stuff, I'm only going to go over probably once or twice maybe because I don't want to, you know, slow things down too much by going over that every single time. Uh, but I think I'm actually going to pick these up by habit. I put them there and we're going to come over to uh, coal. Now with coal, I actually made a very small mistake here. Uh, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to put these on initially. So suppose perhaps not a mistake, just a uh, misunderstanding of what I want to do. Uh, let's go ahead and get some more iron. So what we're going to do, uh, we can get some more iron here. There we go. Uh, let's put something here. What we're going to do is a nice little trick uh, to get yourself some automated coal production. So one thing we could do is we could build a box and we could put a box here. And then we could put coal on this and it will mine the coal in the box. However, this is going to require you to keep coming back and feeding this with coal because it will not fuel itself. Uh, however, we can create a setup where others will fuel it for it. Uh, so if we take another one and we go to place it down, we hit R. You can rotate things with R. You can also do that once they're placed. Uh, we do this and you can see they're now pointing into each other. And how this is going to work is actually quite fantastic. This will mine coal, and instead of outputting into a box, it's actually going to output into this machine. Um, now, of course, this doesn't work with every machine. It will only work with something that can actually accept that type of material. Uh, but as you can see, this one is mining out into here. This one's mining out into here. And they're going to just consistently be fueling themselves. And I can come by and just control left click and drag. I can drag over them. I don't have to individually click each and take the fuel. Now you can see this guy ran out of fuel. I did take all the fuel it had, um, but I've never really had a situation where I make all of them run out of fuel. Maybe I make a couple of them, but then they just restock from the other ones. So this is a nice little automated uh, system there for some fuel production. I'm going to stick that back in there. We're going to manually mine a little more stone and then we're going to get some automation on that. And at that point, we can really start cranking. So what's our first goal going to be? It's going to be electric power because right now we're working with this burner stage is what a lot of people call it, this burner stage power. Uh, and this is while, you know, we have these neat, neat little tricks here, this auto fueling. Um, this is a bit tedious once you start getting more and more of them. So we're going to want some electricity. You know, that's, that's a great thing to have. And uh, this is going to allow us to, you know, just have better versions of these and then have, uh, you know, the the option to not constantly fuel them, at least ourselves. Uh, now, there are still machines, of course, that will take fuel like furnaces, no matter what. Uh, but those will be easily handled later on with these transport belts and these inserters, these big arms that will put things in machines for us. You can kind of see where this is going. If you are new to the game, again, which I hope a lot of you watching this are and uh, have found this helpful so far. Uh, if you are new to the game, you can kind of see where this might be going. We are stepping stone, like step stoning ourselves uh, farther and farther into automation. And the very interesting uh, and funny and, and really just ingenious thing about Factorio is that the end goal really almost becomes you not playing the game yourself. Now that you may be like, whoa, that, oh, wait, 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 what did I get myself into? I want to be, I want to play this game. Well, you obviously are playing and, and this is why it's brilliant. There are kind of two sides to it. There, there seems to always, always be something to do in the game. It doesn't matter what stage of the game you're in. There almost never seems to be a moment where you can, where you're just sitting there and you're just like, okay, I have nothing to do. Um, but on the flip side, 
the goal of the game really is to get to a point where the things you have to do are just upgrading and increasing the size of things that are already working on their own. Uh, it, it'll make a lot more sense once we get there, and I'll go much deeper into it as we progress. Uh, but I'm just going to collect a few more materials here, and I think perhaps I would like uh, one more of these to go on copper up here at the top. Uh, because we get so much automation later on, so many different things, I don't want to spoil it for you, but uh, there are levels of automation, even past belts, uh, or I would say uh, a different variety than belts, and they really do allow you to just not even have to... Uh, do anything to make your factory work aside from you know maybe going and securing some more materials once the you know the the patches you have run out and uh, you know of course then expanding running some some train lines there are trains running some train lines uh, to go collect those materials but in terms of actually like feeding things what they need uh, that is later on does not really become a concern of something you have to do yourself like I'm I'm gonna get to a point where I will never have to go in and just manually pick up or manually drop things into these machines everything will be done for me and that is a fantastic part of this and it may sound kind of weird you may be like okay well i'm not so sure you know i'm not sure how fun that sounds it's incredibly fun it may not seem like it but once you get there it is one of the best feelings i've ever had in a video game uh, once you automate something and complete something especially for the first time and you realize wow i built this uh, you know, I, I did this, I made this work, it works on its own, uh, and you can just sit back and watch it for a minute. Uh, okay, so we now have all these uh, materials, we have some iron, some copper, some stone. Uh, our first goal here, like I said, is going to be some power. Uh, because we would like to research things, we can open our research window by hitting T, and this is going to be perhaps quite overwhelming, we have a massive tech tree. Uh, try not to let that overwhelm you, we're just going to go step by step here. The first thing... We're probably going to want there's actually multiple choices and this will maybe depend on your particular situation or uh, preference but typically i like to choose either item automation uh turrets if i'm feeling very pressured by the enemies i'm not quite at the moment despite there being a base right there military again uh, this one i do like to get very early just because this thing uh, upgrades my personal weapons uh, which is always a good thing to have logistics which allows some more belt uh, related things which we don't need quite yet uh, and then lights and some next science, which you use to, of course, unlock things. So we're going to pick automation. We cannot do anything with it yet because we need a laboratory and electricity to run that laboratory. But we're going to start it uh, really quickly in terms of how research works. Uh, similar to items, it instead of ingredients, this shows you what it gives you. This gives us the ability to make assembling machine ones and long-handed inserters. Now, we've not even looked at inserters, so I'm not going to really go more into that. Uh, the cost, how costs work. This can be maybe a little confusing uh, sometimes. So this is the type of science pack it requires. There are quite a few uh, in the game. And this is the time in seconds that it takes for one process. One unit is what they call it. I like to call it a process. Uh, one process of the research. And then this is how many processes, how many units or cycles, I suppose would be a good word, uh, it needs. So it needs... 10 cycles of this research, of the progression bar going from 0 to 100 uh, in a lab, not in, in its entirety, but in a lab, uh, it needs 10 cycles of consuming packs. So, And it takes one per cycle. So it needs 10 science packs, right? And it needs one, and we need 10 cycles of that. And then it takes 10 seconds, so it takes 100 seconds. Now, keep in mind, this is with one lab. The more laboratories you have, the faster you can do it because instead of if you have two, it then takes 50 seconds because you have twice as many. If you have four, you know, then it takes even less, so on and so forth, uh, which is really, really nice. So we've, uh, we're have we going to select this, and if we come over here, you can see this is where it will show. Obviously, again, it's not working. We need some power. So we need an offshore pump. This is going to allow us to... Uh, take liquid uh, water specifically and send it into boilers which will create steam and then that steam will go into steam engines and give us power uh, most of us know how a steam engine works so uh, then we can take a boiler as I just mentioned 
Let's make uh, one of those for now is fine and one steam engine. And you'll see down here on the left, this is my crafting queue. Uh, one really fantastic thing about Factorio uh, is that it will automatically craft any ingredients you don't have. So, you know, this takes pipes and stone furnaces. Instead of me having to go here and make a stone furnace and then come back here and make pipe and then make the boiler. Uh, if I craft the boiler and I have the materials to make the ingredients, this requires it specifically. So if I have the materials to make a stone furnace and to make pipes, this will automatically make them for me. I don't have to go in there and choose them specifically. It will just make them as long as I have the ingredients to make those things. Okay, now power. Uh, I like to leave a very generous amount of room for power because uh, this can get quite large quite quickly. Uh, so uh, we have two options. Uh, we have water, of course, running along here. We have water here. Uh, we could build our power over here. However, I like to also build it fairly close to coal because that will be our main fuel source for the boilers for a while. And I think right here is a pretty decent spot. Uh, my plan is to build maybe um, either upwards or to the right. This is always a very tough decision for me uh, in terms of where we go. I think upwards would be fine. <clears throat> Our production, I think I'm going to build maybe kind of out and up or something. Uh, we'll just kind of see how, we goes, how it goes. It'll come to us organically. Uh, so we have pipes and pipe to ground, which basically just does uh, an underground underneath the, the surface pipe, which means you can walk around it. Uh, we, we can only make one at the moment. Um, so I don't want to do that because that will actually only give us one end. We need two ends. So I'm going to just make a bunch of these and we're going to click drag these here. Uh, I, I would want an underground pipe here because this would allow me to walk through this section, but we'll fix that later. And I'm going to place this boiler. You can see we have two inputs. We have uh, water on the top, water on the bottom, and then we have an output, which is uh, steam on the right. So this is steam here and these are water. And what this means is you can either input water from both sides but also it means that water can pass through this into the next boiler. So we can now line this up like that. Uh, and then we can take our steam engine and you can see this also has two inputs, both steam, meaning it doesn't matter which way you face it and it can also pass steam through it. And we're going to place him, we tie it up to the steam output right there and uh, this needs fuel, of course, and then this needs, uh, you know, the steam and then to generate power for us. So before we do that, though, before that starts consuming fuel, uh, we need to go get a few more materials just so we can make the ingredients or, or the items required to actually get this working fully. Uh, a mining drill will be quite important. So this is an electric mining drill. And as the name would indicate, this requires electricity to run rather than fuel. And, you know, as I mentioned, this is this means that we will no longer have to fuel our miners. We will just have to fuel the electricity, which then powers our miners. Okay, so it's a very similar icon, uh, but if you get confused, you can just uh, mouse over it and look at the name. We can go ahead and place this. This is uh, quite a lot larger. You can see it's a lot uh, just a bit more beefy looking. And we're going to go ahead and place him right here. Okay, now this new, of course, needs power. So uh, we're going to need some belt. uh, belts. You actually get two belts per craft. You can see up there, if something uh, gives you more than two or more than one, it will say. Uh, if it only gives one, it will just say the name. But if it gives you more than one, it will say how many, in this case, two. Uh, so we'll take some iron. Uh, and then this is going to require a fair bit of belt here. So what we're actually going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to give this a little fuel to start itself. Uh, we do need power poles, though. Uh, so these small electric poles uh, take some wood and some copper cable, which is made from copper plate. And I'm going to, for now, place this here. This is its coverage area, that blue box. That's uh, anything in that area will be uh, provided power. And then its reach is not particularly far. Basically, as soon as the power line... Uh, 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 graphic there searching for the word power line graphic disconnects you they're out of range and they won't actually create connect what this will do is this will actually create two entirely separate electric networks so if you had like more power here you would have a separate network with different power we obviously want these as one network so let's go ahead and drag these along you can actually click and drag I'm let just clicking one at a time to kind of just show you here 
uh, a bit slower. And we're going to take this coal. I think hopefully we have almost enough iron. Uh, so this will be 16 belts in total because we can do eight crafts, each giving us two. And I would very much like, oh, we need some copper. Um, I didn't actually, oh, I did place on copper. You don't really need very much copper early game. Uh, you, you need some. There's a stage, in a, a very particular, a specific stage where uh, you massively increase your need for copper, but we are a little ways off from that. So I'm going to grab this. Now, typically, I do like to make more than one thing here doing iron, which I'm actually going to do right now. Uh, I would like quite a few more than this. The amount you build uh, can just vary depending on your preferences, how much just in general you want or feel you need. Uh, different people build different amounts. I've seen some people just do one uh, or two. Some people do 15 or 20. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, though, a mechanic I want to mention uh, is pollution. So pollution is a thing in the game which does have some uh, negative effects. Uh, now, it does not really affect your factory, uh, your buildings in any way like that. Uh, but what it does do is it spreads throughout the map, which I will show you here shortly. Uh, it spreads throughout the map, and uh, any enemies, the biters, uh, that are hit by the pollution that, that the pollution touches get angered essentially and that is what causes attacks so this is something uh, that i think even a lot of intermediate players don't know and i'm going to share this with you right now this is maybe a little more uh, deeper into the game than a newer player would normally uh, hear about or experience but i think it is an important aspect because i do get questions about this a lot is what triggers attacks and the interesting thing about this is literally the only thing that will trigger um, cause the enemies to attack you, your base, is pollution. Uh, unless, of course, you go and place uh, something near them or you walk near them. Now, you know, if I walked near these guys or I placed a building or a military structure near them, they will, of course, come and attack it if they're directly within range. However, ones that are far off that may come in to attack my base from, you know, far outside, uh, the only thing causing them to do that is my pollution reaching them. So uh, what I like to tell people is uh, one way you can prevent attacks is to either limit your pollution, which can be a bit difficult, or to just go and destroy all the bases uh, that are in and close by your pollution range. Because without pollution hitting them, they're not going to attack you. Uh, now, if you don't want to deal with attacks, period, ever, uh, when you go to create a game in the options menu, there is a option for peaceful mode. And what this means is this will basically mean that the biters will not attack you unless you attack them. Uh, so they will leave you alone completely. You can walk up right next to them. They won't bother you until you shoot them. And then those specific ones right in your general, uh, very close vicinity will attack you. And a lot of people like playing like that. Uh, for new players, that may be a very, uh, a very good way to start out. So you can just learn the mechanics of the game without having to deal with the bugs. But if you, you know, you like a challenge, you like some combat, uh, defending your base type of thing, uh, then you certainly do not have to turn that on. Ours is not on in this game. Uh, but the pollution, why I went into the thing of pollution is in regards to the amount of miners you're doing, uh, particularly these burner miners. These, these here generate a lot of pollution. You can see over there on the right, it has all kinds of different statistics. And this one generates 12 pollution a minute at 12 slash M. Uh, and this is a lot. This is, this is a lot. You can see the furnace generates two, to give you an idea. Um, so the more of these you have, the more materials you'll have, but the more pollution you'll generate. And if we go hit M, and we click this little guy here, the little skull thing, uh, this turns on our pollution map. And this entire red is our pollution. You can see, in fact, it's very close to hitting this base, which will cause an attack. Uh, it's also spreading over water, uh, which we will notice eventually will actually create polluted water, which is a very new thing, uh, brand new in 1.0, in fact. Uh, and one other thing I want to, I don't want to try, I may have already overloaded you with information, and I apologize. I will be going over some of this, some of this stuff multiple times uh, throughout the episodes. Um, but one thing uh, other to mention about pollution is it spreads uh, at different speeds over different terrains. So currently we are on what would be considered desert. Or, or sand, and that's where it spreads the quickest in terms of natural terrains. Uh, you know, it spreads slower over kind of 
grassy areas and then any trees it hits will actually slow it down quite a lot. Uh, it spreads fairly quickly over water as well. Uh, the quickest way it spreads is over player placed um, ground tiles. Uh, you can place things later on like concrete and stone paths and uh, that makes it spread extremely quickly. So just a few notes there uh, on how that works, but let's get back into the game. So let's automate, finish automating our power production here. Now obviously this needs power to generate coal to give us power. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna dump a little bit of coal. We only need to put it in one. Of course, there's no steam power here, so don't do that one. And this guy is cranking away. And I'm making these symbols go away by hitting Alt. Uh, that is a default hotkey for advanced info. I highly, highly recommend you play with this on. It will make things so much easier for you when you can actually tell where outputs are and you can tell where, um, and you can tell uh, like just what way things are facing. I should have mentioned that earlier. I apologize. A lot of you were probably wondering like, hey, I don't have this on. Why, how do I turn this on? Uh, well, hopefully you made it this far. I will try to post, uh, maybe pin a comment in, down in the comment section mentioning this because it's very important. So hitting Alt will do this. You can change it because obviously, as you might imagine, if you Alt tab a lot, this will turn it on and off. It can be a bit annoying. Uh, so we're going to take a burner inserter. I've made this inserter. So what do inserters do? Uh, inserters, well, they insert. <laughs> they pick up ingredients in front of a belt or a uh, what, what we like to call containers, any, basically meaning anything that has an inventory, uh, assembling machines, boxes, furnaces, anything in front of them that's a belt or a container uh, entity they will pick up from or drop into. So this indicates the line there is where it's picking up, the arrow is where it exports out. Uh, we're going to pick the places here and you'll notice this is not working. Uh, that's because this actually does not need fuel at the moment. Uh, if it did, let's just take this out. This guy will first fuel himself, which is pretty neat, and then he will fuel this. Uh, now, you can do electric inserters, which do not require fuel. They require electricity. Uh, the reason I like doing burner inserters is because it creates a bit of a uh, failsafe, where if you run into a situation, you probably will at some point, where you start running out of coal, and you don't notice and your coal dwindles down and your power plant runs out of coal and shuts off and you have no power. Uh, let's say you only have a little bit of uh, coal or something on you. You put a little in to jump start it. Um, you know, you don't, you don't want, or maybe, or maybe you just like have a couple coal running down the belt still. Um, if you used an electric inserter, you won't have power to actually have the inserter insert coal into this and jump start it again. Since this requires fuel, this can work completely without le electricity. So if you have like one coal that slips through or something before you turn this on, this can fuel itself and then start inserting the additional coal and such uh, on its own, even if there's no power. So it's just kind of a fail safe against like feedback loops. Um, so there we go. One last thing I wanna touch on in power here is the steam engines. So as we mentioned, they require steam. Uh, one boiler here can support, uh, can generate enough steam for two steam engines. Uh, so we can put another one at the end here, uh, and then we will need to start using this one to put two more, etc. And this will stack quite a weight. Um, as we get farther in, you will hear me mentioning ratios and demonstrating ratios a lot, and this is a pretty big part of the game. Now, you do not have to follow ratios at all. I want to make that clear. If you just don't care and you're like, well, you know, I just want to put 10 steam engines here. I just want to do one boiler, one steam engine. The thing about Factorio is you can play however you want. If you want to do that, you can do that, and it will work to a degree. Uh, I like to play with ratios because it just makes things easier for me personally to process. It makes things run smoother, uh, but you by no means have to. Uh, anyways, these will stack. Basically, you can put them one after another after another up to 20 of these in a row. So we're going to build this 20 long of boilers. And, and then, obviously, since each one can support uh, two steam engines, uh, this can then have 40, uh, 40 steam engines of power. So the ratio here we'll say is 20 to 40. So 20 boilers to 40 steam engines. And then once we hit that point, we will need to create another setup, like basically another copy of that, because extending past that will start to mean that these don't get enough water, don't generate, generate enough steam, fuel may become a problem, and it just, you know, it'll be harder to work with, it won't work as efficiently. So 20 boilers to 40 steam engines. So as you can see, this guy is working very nice uh, new mining, I say new, 
Uh, this was very recently introduced before 1.0 for anyone who played previous 1.0. I'm going to go ahead and pick these up. We don't really need these anymore. Uh, luckily, they do not generate pollution when they're not working. Uh, but I will leave these here since this is our only iron. Uh, and I'm going to start... I'm going to make a lab. This requires quite a lot of stuff. Circuits we'll get into later. Hey, we just got a uh, achievement. Okay, so trigger an alien attack by pollution. Well, that's a bit concerning. Here they come. Oh, dear. Okay, so that's almost an early warning system. I think they're actually going to kill this. They are. Whew. So we had a little, uh, little problem there. <laughs> there you go, guys. So there's your first uh, uh, introduction to combat. Uh, I do want to mention, I think it's about time to close up this video, but I want to mention how I fought those guys, because uh, this will become important uh, so you don't panic. Uh, what you can do is if you hold down spacebar when enemies are nearby, it will auto-target them. Uh, so I literally just walked up and held spacebar, and it auto-targeted the biters and shot them. Uh, if you want to specifically target something, uh, like say I walked up and I want to specifically only target the spawner, uh, if you hit and hold C over something and mouse over it, so we'll just demonstrate on a tree, uh, it will shoot only the thing you're mousing over. Uh, if you want to just kind of go you know, crazy and just shoot, open up, fire on everything, you just hold space. Um, so that's how I did that. Uh, I didn't. I didn't have a laser aim there. Fortunately, I, I hate to admit, but uh, uh, I just held space and it and it took care of them. Uh, now, obviously, again, this is a bit of a problem. Uh, these guys are quite close, and I think I'm actually going to switch my research to military. So we can come in here, and uh, we come up here to this part, and we clear this, and then we research start this. Um, I have a research queue. Now, when you start the game, you likely will not have this. Uh, this option is actually turned off by default until you beat the game. Uh, if you want it on by default, if you want it on and to start with it, when you go to create your game, there will be an option, I think it's under advanced uh, or other settings, uh, where you can have the research queue always on, and that's how I have mine on from the get-go. Um, I think perhaps I will make a video going over all the star options and what they do and how to use those. Uh, let me know if you guys would be interested in that. Uh, so I'm going to play, I'm coming over here because I want to place this lab down by some power. So here's what the laboratory looks like. And as you can see, woof, there's a lot of stuff in here. So let's not worry about that. Let's work on the science packs as our last bit of this episode. Uh, these are automation science packs, first ones you'll need. Uh, they're very ac simple, actually. They require copper and some gears. Gears require just some iron. Uh, you can handcraft these, meaning you can craft these yourself without needing a machine to do it. Uh, you can actually do that with all science packs, but it gets a bit ridiculous later on, so you will want to automate that process. Uh, and I'm just left clicking. Uh, if I want to make a lot of them, I can right click, and that will automatically queue up five. Or I can shift left click to craft all of the ones I have materials for. Uh, but I'm going to right click this to get rid of that. Uh, crafting queue because I don't want to make all of them at the moment and we're going to take these again control left click and dump them in there and we had some electricity going through some Frankenstein Frankenstein type stuff happen in here and uh, you can see our progression bar so this is going to do one cycle this is our overall progression this is a cycle so it's going to hit this and then start over boom one cycle done starting at second cycle and it's also progressing the overall research bar I'm going to put these in here. This needs 10. This one in particular, I think we need three more. Uh, reason I'm getting military uh, is because with the better weapons, I'm going to be able to actually go and destroy that base, which is going to be my goal. Now, I could get turrets and just defend, but I like to personally take a very proactive approach, and especially with something this close. Like, why? My, my perspective is why have turrets here constantly consuming ammo from a base that will always, always attack you forever, basically, unless you destroy it, because it's always going to be by your base. Um, why do that when you can just come over here and destroy it and then not have to worry about it anymore? Uh, you'll also notice a blue line here. This is a power pole grid. You can turn this off electric network like that. But this shows you your power lines and where they run. It's pretty cool. Uh, we can open this up, drop these in here, control left click, uh, drops them in, and this will start going, giving us what we need. So the next step here is going to be creating smelting. Because I don't obviously want to be running back and forth like crazy this entire time, we need to create an automated smelting setup. This is going to require quite a bit. Some furnaces, some belts, some inserters, some miners, uh, and a lot of them. 
So we will work on that next episode. I'm going to start crafting some of these. We will also work on clearing out this base next episode, guys. I think that does it. Like I said, this is going to be a much slower, at least initially, uh, playthrough since we have so many, uh, hopefully, new players coming here. And, uh, you know, I hope you, I hope this didn't get too confusing. I hope you found this helpful and informative. If you did, uh, you know, leaving a like would be great so other people can help find this too and hopefully uh, gain some useful info from it. And please leave any comments and feedback below. If there's anything major I forgot to cover that would be relevant to this point of the game, let me know if you have questions, if you're a new player uh, or, or an advanced player and think there would be things other people would like to know. If you have questions, leave them below. Uh, anything you want, guys, uh, feedback uh, and stuff, just leave it below, and I will do my best to respond and answer the questions and such. And we will continue on in next episode. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try to do a minimum of one of these episodes per day. Uh, the first week here, maybe I'll try to crank out even more of those. I do have other types of uh, Factorio content I want to make. Uh, the channel will be putting out a lot of Factorio content here for a good while. So. Stick around, subscribe if you're new here. Uh, hopefully you can find some enjoyment and uh, help here. And I think that's going to do it, guys. I think that's going to do it. I think this is a good place to stop. We just finished our military. Hopefully we can uh, go ahead and close this out before the biters attack again. And there we go. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And until next time, I look forward to seeing you all. And do take care.